Hello guys and welcome back to Reading Club. So today I'm going to read you Dirty Birdie Lou, the third story, which is called Move. Chapter 1. Bertie was watching TV when Mom and Dad burst into the lounge. Great news, beamed Dad excitedly. We're getting a hamster, cried Bertie. No, better than that, we're moving house. Bertie almost fell off the sofa. Moving, he gasped. When? As soon as we've sold our house, said Dad. It's going up for sale next week. Isn't that marvellous? But I don't want to move, said Bertie. Where will we live? asked Susie. In Poshley Green, said Mum. It's a much nicer area and we've already seen a house we like. But I don't want to move, grumbled Bertie, raising his voice. Mum took no notice. It's got a lovely long garden and a park over the road and wait till you see the size of your bedroom, Susie. Cool, said Susie. But I don't want to move, yelled Bertie, jumping up and down. Mum sighed. Dad frowned. How do you know? He said. You haven't even seen the house yet. I like our house, said Bertie. It's got my bedroom and all my stuff. Well, you can take your stuff with you, replied Dad. And I'm sure you'll make lots of new friends, said Mum. What for? asked Bertie. I've got friends already. I mean, at your new school. New school, Bertie stared. Had they all gone raving mad? This was an outrage, a disaster. He had been going to Pudsley Junior practically all his life. It was his school. He could walk there from his house meeting Darren and Eugene on the way. He didn't want to go to some horrible new school where the teachers had you flogged for breathing too loud in class. Well, I, I think it'll be nice, said Susie. No, it won't, scowled Bertie. It'll be horrible. Just because I'll have the biggest bedroom, crowed Susie. No, you won't, smelly pants. Well, won't. Stop squabbling, cried Mum. I'm sorry, Bertie, but Dad and I have decided and we're going. I'm sure once you've settled in, you'll love it. Bertie slumped back on the sofa and turned up the TV. It wasn't fair. Nobody asked if he wanted to move. Why were parents always ruining his life? Well, they could move him if they liked, but he wasn't going. He would lock himself in his room and never come out, ever. Except it over pizza. Chapter 2 A week passed and nothing more was said about the move. Bertie hoped Mum and Dad had forgotten the idea, but on Friday afternoon, he was walking home from school with his friends when he spotted something in the window <coughs> of Floggett's estate agents. That's my house, said Bertie. Wow, said Darren. Looks like your mum and dad are really serious. Bertie pressed his nose against the glass. This is terrible, he said. We've got to stop them. Darren shrugged. What can we do? Maybe no one will buy it, said Eugene hopefully. They walked on in gloomy silence. Bertie couldn't imagine leaving, living somewhere without his friends. If they moved, he probably wouldn't have any friends. Couldn't you put them off, said Eugene. Who? The people buying your house. Tell them it's falling down or something. Bertie shook his head. Let's see, it's not falling down. But Eugene's right, said Darren. All you have to do is put them off. How? said Bertie. Easy. Tell them you've got vampires leaving next door, living next door. Tell them there's a body buried in the garden. Tell them it's called fleas. It's a house, not a dog, said Bertie. All the same, maybe Eugene had a point. He couldn't stop his parents selling the house, but maybe he could stop anyone from buying it. It would just take a few unpleasant surprises. Back home, Bertie got out his top-secret notebook and began to draw up his battle plan. This was war. Monday arrived. The first people to view the house were due at four, and Mum was getting frantic. Bertie, have you tidied your room? Yes. And picked up your socks? Yes. And threw away those rotten apple cores. Nearly, shouted Bertie. Bertie had never seen his house looking so clean and tidy. Mum had swept and polished till, polished till it shone like a palace. Ding dong, enemy attack. Bertie hurried downstairs. Operation Booby Trap was underway. 
Now remember, said Mum, stay out of the way and don't touch anything. What's that you've got? Where? Behind your back. Bertie brought out a box. Nothing, just rubbish I'm throwing out. Hurry up then, said Mum, rushing to open the door. Mr and Mrs Mossop, do come in. Shall we start in the lounge? Battle stations. Bertie darted into the kitchen and closed the door. Setting the box down, he removed the lid and peeped inside. Time to come out, he whispered. Mum had finished showing the Mossops downstairs. Now for the bedrooms. She heard Bertie had tidied his room. And this is my son's bedroom, she said, opening the door. Bertie looked up from the book he was pretending to read. He was slightly out of breath. Bertie, this is Mr and Mrs Mossop, said Mum. Pleased to meet you, smiled Bertie. What a nice, quiet boy, said Mrs Mossop. And doesn't he keep his room tidy? Her, yes, said Mum, giving Bertie a suspicious look. She closed the door. Bertie listened as they went downstairs. Any second now, he thought... Oh, and this is Mossa burst from the kitchen. Mice, she shrieked. You got mice. I'm so sorry, said Mum. I can't think how they got there. Please don't go. Maybe you'd like to see the garden. No, thank you, bristled Mrs. Mossop. We've seen quite enough. The front door slammed. There was a heavy silence. Bertie, yelled Mum. I want a word with you now. Bertie crept downstairs. Mum was waiting for him with a face like thunder. All right, where did you get them? Get what? asked Bertie. The mice. One of them ran up Mrs. Mossop's leg. Mice? said Bertie, sounding amazed. I wasn't born yesterday, Bertie. The truth. Where did you get them? Bertie gulped. Well, um... I might have been looking after a couple of mice for Eugene, but I left them in their box. Mum ground her teeth. Listen to me, she said. We're all selling this house, whether you like it or not. So you are not to bring mice, spiders, flies, beetles or any other creatures indoors. Do I make myself clear? Yes, nodded Bertie. He tripped upstairs to his room and closed the door. Plan number one, I worked like a dream. It was a pity about spiders, though, because there were next on this list. Chapter three. A week passed. Visitors came and went. Mostly, they went quickly as Bertie was lying and waiting for them. He left trap taps from running, muddy marks in the walls, and bars of soap where people could tread on them. Mum despaired. Dad threatened to stop his pocket money. On Friday, Mum filled the dishwasher and mopped the floor. No one had told her a selling house. Selling a house was so exhausting. Ding dong! The warners have, had arrived. Bertie was busy watching TV. Bertie, turn the hut off, or then Mum. But I'm watching Alien Arthur. You can watch it later, and don't forget what I said. No more tricks. Mum rushed off to enter the door. Bertie heard voices in the hall, and a small boy tripped into the lounge, followed by his mother. This is Mrs. Werner and little George, said Mum. George sucked his thumb and stared at Bertie. Why don't we start in the back room, said Mum. Bertie waited till they'd gone and sprang into action. Time for brilliant plan number eight. Dashing to the kitchen, he filled Wiffer's bowl with, a dog, with doggy chunks and took it upstairs. Wiffer was dozing in his favourite spot on the landing. When he smelled the food, he followed Bertie eagerly. Bertie opened the door of the airing cupboard. Good boy, in you go, he whispered, placing the bowl inside. Wiffer jumped in and Bertie closed the door. Now for phase two. He took out Susie's mobile and rang his home number. The phone downstairs began to ring. Bloop, bloop. Dad should keep Mum busy for a while. A moment later, Mrs. Warner popped her head round Bertie's door. Okay to look around? Fine, said Bertie. Does she warn you? Sorry, asked Mrs. Warner. Oh, nothing. Bertie went back to his book. Warn me about what? Mrs. Warner persisted. The house, you know, it's... Bertie lowered his voice. Haunted. Haunted? Mrs. Warner turned pale. George sucked his thumb. Bertie hit the redial button on Susie's phone. It's okay, said Bertie. Usually he visits at night. Who? The ghost. Good heavens, gasped Mrs. Warner. It's my dog, Bertie explained. He died last year, but now he's haunting us. You poor child, Mrs. Warner picked up George. You've actually seen this ghost? Oh yes, said Bertie, but mostly you hear him, you know, scratching and howling and so on. I expect you'll get used to it. Mrs. Werner looked worried. She didn't want to get used to it. Shh! Bertie held up a hand. Do you hear that? 
He listened. Scratch, scratch, scratch. Whiffer had finished his food and was pawing at the cupboard door. It's him, the ghost, whispered Bertie. Mrs. Werner held George tighter. Thump, thump. Oh, 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 whoa, whined Whiffer. That's it, gasped Mrs. Werner. We're leaving. He rushed downstairs and bumped into Mum in the hallway. You're not going, she said. We can live here, said Mrs. Werner. Not with that awful dog. Oh, you mean Whiffer, said Mum. Mrs. Werner looked at her. You've seen him too? Well, of course, laughed Mum. I see him all the time. He lives here. Mrs. Warner stared at her in disbelief. You're mad, she said, mad, and fled out the door. Mum caught sight of Bertie watching over the banister. She narrowed her eyes. What was all that about? Search me, said Bertie. I'll just um, go and check on with her. Chapter 4. Sunday morning, Bertie was fixing himself a snack. Dad was taking Susie to a dance lesson. Mum hovered the hall, dusting the mirror, dusted the mirror, and tripped over Bertie's shoes. She stuffed some roses into a vase on the kitchen table. Flowers, said Bertie, they make the house smell nice. We've got people coming. Not again, moaned Bertie. Ding dong. Dave and Debbie Sweetly had arrived. Mom took a deep breath. She wasn't sure she could stand much more of this. She hurried to the door. And Bertie, she said, I'm warning you, behave. Bertie thought quickly. So far, Operation Booby Trap had succeeded in driving the enemy out. But he was running out of ideas. How was he going to get rid of these people? He stared, stared at the roses in the vase. Of course, people wanted houses that smelled nice. We don't want houses that smell disgusting. What he needed was something that really stank. Something so pungy, you'd smell it through the whole house. Bertie looked out the window. Whiffer was nosing the flower beds. He squatted down behind the bush. That could only mean one thing. An idea began to take shape in Bertie's head. No, he couldn't. He don't. On the other hand, this was war. He fetched the pooper scooper and hurried outside. <clears throat> creak, creak. Bertie sneaked up the stairs, balancing a lump of dog poo on the pooper scooper. Now, where's to hide it? Somewhere for maximum stink effect. The bathroom? His mum and his his mum and dad's bedroom? Of course, Susie's room. Downstairs he could hear the sweetlies talking in the lounge. He'd have to move fast. Bertie opened Susie's door and slipped inside. His eyes fell on our jewellery box on top of the bookshelf. No one would ever dream of looking in there. A minute later, the sweet Lees came upstairs. I love it, don't you, darling? Gosh, Debbie. It got tons of space and, oh, she wrinkled her nose. Can you smell something? Dave sniffed. Oh, oh, yes, I can. It smells like, well, um, Debbie turned to Mom. Is your toilet blocked? I don't think so, said Mom. She sniffed. There was a nasty smell. Why don't I show you the main bedroom, she said quickly, but Dave was heading for Susie's room. I think it's coming from here, he said, opening the door. The smell was overpowering. He reeled back, holding the noises. Oh, it stinks, gasped Debbie. It's horrible, moaned Dave. Where's it coming from? I have no idea, said Mom. It's my daughter's room. Normally, it smells of nail varnish. Mom looked under the bed. Dave looked on the shelves. Debbie opened Susie's jewelry box. Inside was a ghastly brown blob. Oh, oh, screamed Debbie. Come on, darling, we're going, Come on, darling, we're going, said Dave grimly. Thud, the front door slammed. Bertie waited in his room for Mum to shout his name. Silence. He crept slowly downstairs. Mum was in the kitchen, talking on the phone. Yes, I see. Well, thanks for letting us know. Who's that? asked Bertie. The estate agent, said Mum wearily. The house we wanted to buy has been sold. Bertie's face lit up. Does that mean we're not moving? Mum sighed heavily. Okay, I give in. I don't think I can take any more of this. Bertie danced around the kitchen. He'd won. They were staying. Wait till he told his friends. The front door banged. Susie was back. She thumped upstairs. Uh-oh, thought Bertie. I hope she doesn't go in. Ah! Well, that's the end of this book. Well, that was a very nice book. This was a very nice book to read. And I really enjoyed it. So I hope you liked it as much as I did. And if you did, please click many likes and subscribe reading club. Well, I'll come back 
maybe tomorrow with a new and improved channel. Bye, everybody.